It's time for One Man's Family now, and then it'll be time for the Quiz Kids. A full hour of entertainment. One Man's Family, then the Quiz Kids. One Man's Family, brought to you by T-A-B-C-I-N, Tabson, the new improved antihistaminic compound tablet for colds made by Miles Laboratories, makers of Alka-Seltzer. One Man's Family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Today we present Chapter 1, Book 74, entitled, Joan Makes a Confession. A warm noontide sun sharpens the vivid colors of spring in San Francisco. From Father Barber's garden, the red span of the Golden Gate Bridge seems very close as it reaches majestically into the green hills of Marin County across the bay. Six blocks straight down from the family home, Claudia Barber Lacey is still reveling in Nikki's return from England. Indeed, the Lacey household has been quite festive. They have celebrated Nikki's homecoming and Joan's 18th birthday, the day when she came into a portion of her inheritance. And it is that inheritance which brings Jack Barber, briefcase in hand, to the Lacey front door this Saturday noon. Why, Jack, old boy, how are you? Hi, Nikki. Come in, come in. Glad to see you. I'm just coming home from the office and stopped by with these papers for Joan. Oh, Joan isn't here. She went over to her grandfather's. Oh, that's okay. Caught around? She's out back in the terrace. Shall we go out there? Okay, I, I want to... Nikki? Oh, hello, Jack. Hi. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I was just telling Nikki I stopped by on my way home from the office. Saved myself a trip. He has some papers for Joan. Sit down. Or would you rather go outside? Well, I think we'd better stay in here. Jack seems to have laryngitis. Yeah, I have. Besides, I got to get home pretty quick. Saturday afternoon's my time to get acquainted with my brood of daughters. <laughs> I find I've had to get acquainted with them all over. Nikki can't get over how they've changed. Yeah. Well, I better get down to business. Now, let's see. <laughs> my goodness, those papers look legal. Oh, they're legal, all right. When anything goes through Judge Hunter's hands, you can bet it's legal. He's uh, turned most of the detail work of Jones' inheritance over to me. Oh, that's grand, Jack. I've wondered why he hadn't done it before. Well, he said he would have his eye on things. Told me to remind Joan of everything he's told her. Well, don't emphasize it. She says she feels as if Judge Hunter were peering over her shoulder all the time. Sure, but now that she's 18, she's got responsibility. <laughs> That's the trouble with money. Instead of ending your worries, it just seems to add to them. <laughs> what am I saying? How do I know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just the same. The day will come, Jack. Judge Hunter says so. He told me himself. Oh, I can use a little bucking up. That Pinky character really took me apart the other day. To hear him talk, I'm about the biggest failure that ever cracked the law book. Pinky said that? Well, something to that effect, yeah. Oh, honestly, that boy. Well, let's get down to business here. Uh, first, here's Joan's bank book for her checking account showing the first monthly deposit. And her checkbook, all neatly printed with her name. Here. My, how impressive. Look, Nicky. Oh, quiet. You will notice that the judge has arranged for a counter signature on her checks. Counter signature? Uh, right here. In other words, either your signature or Nikki's must appear on the check along with Jones before the bank will honor it. Why? Well, Judge Hunter felt that would be wise. Protection for Joan, and of course it'll enable you to keep tab on what she's doing with her money. Oh, but it's her money, isn't it? I don't see what right we well, have Well, that's to. the way the judge set it up, Claude. You'll have to argue with him about that. See here, I think it's rather a wise provision, my dear. Oh, sure. I was just thinking that Joan might feel that we didn't trust her. Oh, well, not trust her exactly... What I mean is that we don't have confidence in her ability to handle money. Well, she is only 18, Claude. That's pretty young to have a lot of dough at your disposal and not have anyone to check up on you. All right. You're the lawyer. Okay. I got one thing more here for you. It doesn't amount to much. Only a matter of 5,000 bucks is all. Oh, a mere nothing. $5,000? Sure. That's the lump sum that Joan's grandmother provided for her when she reached 18. Here's a certified check for that amount. The reason it didn't clear right on her birthday is because it took a little time to go through the trust fund. <laughs> Judge Hunter raised heck about it. He hates to have anything not be on schedule. Well, it proves that he's human, after all. I'm delighted. I'll hold it over his head. He's always so... Oh, who's that? Excuse me, Jack. Probably a salesman. Well, I think that about takes care of everything. Hi, Uncle Nicky. Well, uh, how are you, Pinky? Come in. Oh, he would show up. Hello, Pinky. Hi, Aunt Claudia. Oh, Uncle Jack, how's the boy? Hello, big shot. Huh? Um, uh, Joan isn't home, Pinky. No? Well, that's okay. Might be just as well at that. Uh, sit down, Uncle Nicky. I got a proposition I think might be interesting to you. Well, as a matter of fact, Pinky, old boy, we were just in the midst of a, a business discussion here, and, uh... Good, uh, that's right up my alley. You see, I... Hey, what's all this? Checks and bank books all over the joint. 
Jones? Yes. Why don't you put all that away, Claude? Uh, yes. Gosh, pretty soft for some people. When Hank and I were 18 a couple of months ago, we were lucky to pick up an odd $5 bill or two. Joan has her birthday and she's up to her ears in dough. Well, I gotta get on home, Claude. Oh, we'll be having lunch soon. Won't you stay and have some with Nikki and me? We'd be delighted to have you, old boy. Oh, thanks, but Betty's expecting me. <laughs> what a life. What'd you say? No, I sure don't envy you. Going home to all that noise and confusion. Six kids. Man, you're getting pretty hard to swallow, Pinky. Huh? Well, so long, Claude. Goodbye, Jack. Say hello to Betty. Okay. Here, yeah, don't forget your briefcase. Oh, yeah, thanks. We appreciate you bringing this over, Jack. All in the line of duty. I'll be seeing you. So long, Uncle Jack. Bye. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. Bye. Cheerio. Say, Aunt Claudia. Yes? Is Uncle Jack handling Jones' estate now? I say, Claudia, don't, don't you think it might be jolly to have luncheon out on the terrace? It's a beautiful day. Oh, I think it'd be grand. I'll tell Mrs. McCullough. Oh, uh, Pinky... I suppose you have to be going back home, don't you? Well, as I told you, I've got a proposition I wanted to talk over with you. Oh. Well, we're only going to have a sort of sandwich lunch. You'd probably prefer something a little more substantial. Oh, sandwich would be swell. Well, then I'd better set another place, Nicky. Nicky. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, quite. Uh, sorry. You uh, will stay for lunch, Pinky? Oh, sure. Thanks. Yes, uh, quite. April showers bring May flowers, just said. But April showers can also bring a fine crop of spring colds. Spring weather with its damp, rainy days and sudden changes in temperature is cold-catching weather. But if your medicine chest is well stocked with Tabson, you can guard against the possibility of a cold taking hold in your family. Yes, at the first sign of a cold, take Tabson, quick. Tabson, T-A-B-C-I-N, the new and improved antihistaminic cold tablet, is designed to go further in checking cold symptoms than tablets containing antihistamine alone. Here's what we mean. Tabson contains first an effective antihistamine to check the sneezing and sniffling and the irritation in the nose and throat. In addition, Tabson gives you analgetic and antipyretic action. These extra ingredients help relieve the aches and pains of a cold and reduce the fever. Tabson also contains a special ingredient to counteract that dull, drowsy feeling. And Tabson is a smooth-coated tablet, easier to swallow. You get all these benefits in one tablet. You can check and double-check cold symptoms with Tabson. So remember, at the first sign of a cold, take Tabson quick. Get a package of Tabson today and have it ready when the next cold strikes in your family. Remember the name, Tabson, T-A-B-C-I-N. Tabson for colds and hay fever. The bright red tablets in the bright red package at all drugstores. Mr. Pinky's luncheon is about to be interrupted. His mother is on the phone. Claudia? Hazel, is my wandering son over there? He is? Oh, he's supposed to be here mowing the lawn. Would you send him right home? No, right now, please, Claude, and don't let him get in your hair. Just send him home. Ever since Joan's birthday, he's been over there morning, noon, and night. Dissolves in thin air like the fairy queen. Hmm? <laughs> well, I do get exasperated. Dan just said he dissolves in thin air like the fairy queen. All right, thanks, Claude. Bye. Dan, you should have made him finish his job. Well, what would you suggest? I told him to finish it. I begged him to finish. I even threatened then I turned my back, and he's gone with the wind. You're too easy on him. You're too easy on all of them. Well, I'm afraid I wasn't cut out to be a Simon Legree. But, Dan, Pinky's over at Claudia's again. Joan's inheritance simply fascinates him. I think he's trying to figure out some way to get some money out of her. Well, I think Nicky has the good sense to throw him out if he gets too obstreperous. But you know how he talks, that big investment broker business. It's, it's humiliating. Didn't I hear you tell Claudia to send him home? Yes, and she seemed perfectly willing to do just that. Mm, good. Perfectly willing. Well, that takes care of the situation, then. Will you talk to him? Will you take him upstairs to his room and shut the door and talk to him so he'll remember? No, Hazel, I, I don't like to be the heavy father. Dan, I, I think don't... he doesn't listen to me. He needs a man's hand. Well, you know, this could be just adolescence, Hazel. <laughs> you know, when you're 18, it pains you to see what a mess the grown-ups have made of a simple little thing like living. Well, I'm just going to have to ask you to help me, Dan. I, I'm worried about him condescending to everybody, you and Jack and Cliff, even his grandfather. Okay, Hazel, I'll, I'll crack down. Hey, why am 
I treated like I was about 14 years old. Good gosh. Here I am, practically a college man, and I have to come home in the middle of a sandwich. Pinky, you didn't stay at Aunt Claudia's for lunch again. Not again. No, oh, I was gonna. But Aunt Claudia said you wouldn't let me. I had about two bites in my sandwich and had to come home. Invited yourself, I suppose. No, Mom, they asked me. Dan? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Pink, uh, let's go upstairs to your room a minute. What for? I, I gotta finish the lawn. Dan finished it. You left the lawnmower right smack in the middle of the lawn. Oh, well, you shouldn't have done that, Dan. I was going to... Dan asked you to go upstairs. Huh? Oh, sure. Mom, you saw at me about something? Pinky, come here. Hmm? Well, okay. I only went over there for a couple of minutes. I, I didn't mean to stay so long. All right, all right, up the stairs. In here. Mm, okay. Sit down, Pinky. Oh, brother. Must be nice to have dough. Over there at Aunt Claudia's, you just sort of feel like you're rolling around in money. Uncle Nicky's money and now Joan's mother. Brother. Why don't you sit down? Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Don't you ever feel self-conscious about hanging around when people are sitting down to lunch? Dan, they don't mind having me drop in. They like to have me. I always try to kind of brighten things up for them. Oh, Golly, it's great over there. You know, if Joan was willing, she could be practically famous. Sure, newspapers call up and want pictures of her. You know, for the society page and stuff. Well, why did you go there this morning? What was the big idea? Huh? How did you know I had a big idea? I didn't. I see. You were struck with a big idea, were you, and just dropped everything. Well, what was it? Well, uh, it's kind of a long story, Dan. Shorten it. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know Joan's been saying she might buy a car now that she's got some of her inheritance. Yeah. Well, if she had one of those British right-hand convertibles, that'd do something for her when she gets to college next year. I don't think I quite follow your reasoning, but go ahead. Well, then, nobody's going to notice an ordinary car. But suppose she swanks around in a British job with a right-hand drive, you know, a yellow convertible. See what that would do for her? Get it? Go on. Well... I met a car dealer. He just handles foreign makes, see? And he kind of made me a proposition. What sort of a proposition? Huh? Just answer my question. Well, it's a business proposition. He offered me a commission. For what? If I could sell one of his cars. Yes? <laughs> just business, Dan. Ordinary, everyday business. I saw a chance to make 50 bucks. You went over to Aunt Claudia's to try to sell one of those British cars, is that it? Huh? Well... I kind of pointed out the advantages, Dan, sure. Horned in for lunch and tried to sell Joan a car. Well, now, that's a mighty pretty picture. That isn't the way it was at all. All right, suppose you clear it up for me, then. Well, Joan wasn't there. She's out somewhere. You, you, you mean you tried to sell this car to your Uncle Nicky and Aunt Claudia? Well, Dan, Joan didn't get there, so I, I just tried to lay some groundwork. And did you tell them you were going to get a commission? Dan, car salesmen don't talk to the prospect about their commission... They talk about the car. So you chiseled your own relatives for $50. Well, gee whiz, it's business. Are you proud of this morning's work, Pinky? I don't see anything wrong with it. Oh, I suppose when a story appears in the papers that a young girl has inherited a fortune, you can expect a certain amount of harassment. Phone calls from total strangers, a new crop of salesmen, beggars, scoundrels of one kind or another. But it must have been a shocking surprise to find you on the doorstep, prepared to try to chisel in with the rest of them. But, gee whiz... Did you suppose your Uncle Nicky or your Aunt Claudia were so stupid they didn't realize what you were up to? Why, you're as transparent as a plate glass window. You're an 18-year-old boy. You're behind in your schoolwork. You can't even keep up with the boys and girls in your own class in high school. And yet you have the gall to patronize and condescend to your uncles and aunts, to your own grandfather and your parents. Well, all that's bad enough, Pinky, but this, this performance this morning, oh, that's beyond the pale. <laughs> Gee, I, I didn't look at it that way, Dan. You didn't look at it at all. You were after $50, that's all. You didn't care how you got it. Gosh. Uh, do I understand you have a history paper to write? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, two of them. All right. Sit right down there and write them. Hmm. Well, first, shall I go over to Aunt Claudia's and apologize or what? Drop it. Just drop it. Give them time and maybe they can forget it. Just don't go over there anymore. Stay away. Gosh. Now, write your history papers and don't let me see you again until they're finished. Yes, sir, but... Right now. Yes, sir. 
Oh. Dan, what's the matter? What's wrong? Oh, I've been making a speech, Hazel. I left out something. What was that, Dan? Oh, I had to be pretty rough with him. I, I meant to tell the kid how much I love him. I left that out. Oh, Dan, he knows you love him. What was he trying to do, sell Joan the Bay Bridge? <laughs> no, Joan wasn't there. Oh, yes, yeah, she went over to the family home. Claudia mentioned that on the phone. Said she had something to discuss with her uncle. Good. I, I hope somebody would come along. How are you, Joan? Sit up. Oh, hello, Grandfather. Lunch on the back terrace? Uh, yeah. How does it seem to be a young lady of 18, eh? Oh, I had a very good time at your party. <laughs> uh, enjoyed it. There's a rumor you've been careful of your diet ever since. Huh? <laughs> uh, has Uncle Paul come home yet? <laughs> He'll be along presently. Here, here, sit down. Would you like a glass of milk? Oh, no, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let me see, let me see. What are you wearing there? Is that the locket? Mm Mm-hmm, my present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very pretty indeed. Uh, Somebody said your mother was going to have your portrait painted for your 18th birthday. Mm, That was just an idea, I guess. My birthday's passed and nothing's come of it. Well, Joan. Oh, hello, Grandmother. Now, don't sit out there. Come on in. I'll make you some lunch. Oh, no, thanks. I don't want anything. I I just dropped by to see Uncle Paul. He'll be here any minute now. Hmm. More milk, Henry? Uh, No, thank you. You ought to eat something, Henry. Uh, Fanny, will you please not fuss at me? This is all I wanted. (laughs) Very well. I'll fix up a slice of chocolate cake for you to take along with you, Joan. Oh, thank you, Grandmother. (laughs) I I had a wonderful time with Judge Hunter at your party, Joan. I'm glad somebody did. Uh, You don't like Judge Hunter? Oh, I don't dislike him, Grandfather. I just think he's pretty stuffy. Huh? Oh, he has his little eccentricities like anybody else, but you'll find that he has handled your estate very admirably, my dear. Hi. What's going on here? Oh, hi, Cliff. Here, we'll make room for you. Pull up a chair. <laughs> oh, no, sit still. I think I'll lie on this nice, cool, green grass. <laughs> it's, it's damp. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, and uh, where have you been, Clifford? Oh, I'm the Boy Scout's favorite chauffeur, didn't you know? I drove Andy and some of his pals out to the scout house. Drew? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whose car? Board yours. Parked out in front. I've got to pick him up later. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Joan, look at that sky. Oh, what a day, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. It's great to stretch out on the grass again. You'll catch your death of cold. It's damp. Mm, doesn't seem to be. Yeah. Well, I'll be going now. Oh, pardon me. Uh, uh, don't move, Joan. Uh, Clifford... I left the want ad section of the paper in the library, if you should care to look at it. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, much obliged, Dan. Yes. M- bye, Grandfather. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, tell your mother and Nicholas I may stop by later this afternoon. Oh, all right. Well, don't sit up, Clifford, don't move. Just watch the sky and wave to me from a reclining position. In case you didn't recognize that little flash in the sunlight, that was the deep needle going into here. Oh? You see, um, the unemployed should sit up straight and look alert. That's the general theory. Oh, uh, hey, did you see my locket, Cliff? My birthday present? Oh, let me have a good look at it. Oh, hey. You got a couple of pictures in there? Oh, just one so far. May I see? Oh, well, Paul. Oh, I just happened to have one. I mean, it, it was small enough for the locket. Mm-hmm. Who are you going to put on the other side when you find one small enough? Oh, I don't know. Yours, maybe. Oh, no, no, no. You don't want a paria in there. A what? Paria? Well, what does that mean? Paria? Well, that's somebody at the sight of whom faces do not light up. Oh, Cliff, what a thing to say about yourself. It isn't true. No, you stick around, baby. If your Uncle Cliff doesn't get a job pretty soon, even the triplets will be scowling at him. Clifford, don't you want some lunch? Oh, no, thank you, Mom. The Boy Scouts burned a hot dog for me, and I ate it to be polite. Honey! Honey! I'm coming, Henry. Why don't you two come in? We will in a minute. Honey! Yes, I'm coming. Ah, let's see. What was I saying? Something about a job, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, I've been to two or three places this week. The trouble is, they you either need experience or they've got something they want you to sell from door to door. Maybe I'd get a job as a postman. I've been around here on foot for years now. You should see the mail I've been getting lately. Seems like everybody's got something they want me to invest in or give them money or something. Just toss them in the wastebasket, baby. Oh, hey, there's our boy, Paul. Hiya. Hello. Hello, I've 
I've been waiting for you. You're right with you. Great weather for flying. Did you go up today? Oh, I gave a couple of lessons. How are you, Joan? I'm glad to see you. She's been waiting for you. Here, you want to sit down in Grandfather's chair? Fine. Huh. Nice warm spot you two picked out. It's better down here on the grass. I'd lie down again, only I'm afraid Dad might come out. Well, what's that got to do with it? I think he likes it better if I keep moving. Activity kind of gives him the illusion of work, I guess. <laughs> You're getting a little addled on that subject, Cliff. Yeah, I ought to get a job to shut up about it. Oh, Joan, have you shown Paul your locket? Oh, sure. Don't you feel flattered, Paul? Flattered me? Sure, she's got your picture in it. Oh. oh gosh, honey, you're blushing. Was it a secret? Oh, of course not. Well, in any event, I feel that I've been honored. Well, I know Joan wanted to talk to you, so I'll mosey along. Oh, you don't have to go, Clifford. It isn't anything terribly important. It's okay, honey. I got some things to do before I go pick up Andy. I'll see you all later. Okay. Yeah. Well, young lady, and I do mean young lady, now that you've reached the mellow age of 18, what can I do for you? Oh, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to talk to you. I didn't have anything very important on my mind. Mm -hmm. Not important, but something, huh? Uh, have you ever met Joseph Creighton? The painter? No, why? Oh, I just wondered, that's all. Mm -hmm. You haven't heard anything from him since that night he called at your house so unexpectedly? Mm Mm-mm. Claudia given up the idea of the portrait? Mm, I guess so. <laughs> At least as far as this Creighton's concerned. <laughs> Nicky didn't like him. Oh. Um, what was your impression of him? Oh, well, I thought he was interesting. Just that. Interesting and nothing more? Well, he certainly was out of the ordinary. But he couldn't have thought much of us. He said he'd let us know if he'd consider doing the portrait. We've never heard another word from him. Hmm. Oh, maybe he's been busy. No, I just don't think he liked us. Not me, anyway. Said I didn't have any character in my face. What? He didn't? Honestly, Paul. Something like that. <laughs> uh, he isn't... He isn't married, is he? Not that I... No, why? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know why I asked a silly question like that. What do I care whether he's married or not? Probably never see him again. Uh-huh. Would you like to see him again? Oh, it makes no difference to me. We don't even know where he lives, except that it's somewhere up on Telegraph Hill. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much do you think he charges for a picture anyway? Didn't he tell you? He said he was awfully expensive. <laughs> Just when he said that, he got his arm stuck in the lining of his overcoat. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you have to be that way to be a good artist. And I'll bet he is good, too. Where do you suppose we could see some of his work? Well, Joan, he might have some paintings on exhibit around town someplace. You know, it'd be kind of fun to buy one. I could do that myself, couldn't I? I've got money my own now. I haven't seen any of it yet. But Judge Hunter said it'd be along shortly after my birthday. What do you think the judge would think of your buying a painting? Well, it wouldn't be any of his business. Besides, paintings are a good investment. Mm, they're good. You're quite right. And if Judge Hunter gets me mad, I'll really blow the money in. I might go ahead and have Mr. Joseph Creighton paint me just to spite him. Oh, no, you couldn't do anything like that without talking it over with Claudia and Nikki. That wouldn't be cricket. Well, they wanted it painted. Why can't I get anybody I like? Particularly if I'm willing to pay for it myself. Take it easy now, honey. Before you decide on anything, let's be sure you know why you're doing it. What do you mean? Just a minute now. Don't get your feathers up. We don't want to kid ourselves about anything, huh? There's a difference between wanting a painting done and wanting it done because we're intrigued by the artist. Hmm? Isn't that true? Do you think I'm intrigued by this Joseph Creighton? Don't you think it's possible? And you're not admitting it to yourself? Well... Maybe just a little bit, hmm? Well, I certainly don't agree with Nicky about him. That's a cinch. Just because he happens to be a little unconventional doesn't mean he's not a a good painter. Look, John, why don't you talk it over with your parents? Maybe they'd be perfectly willing to have this fellow go ahead as they originally planned. Oh, Nicky'd really blow up if he thought I liked a kind of screwy character like that. Well, better talk it over with them in any case, isn't it? No use trying to hide it. I'm right out with it. They'll appreciate your being honest and frank with them. Yeah, but supposing they say no, that they don't want to have anything to do with them. Well, that creates a problem. But until they do, why, you're creating a problem that that doesn't actually exist. Huh? Now, aren't you? Well, I guess I am at that. Mm -hmm. And who knows? This all may vanish into thin air in a couple of days. Maybe you'll forget all about this, Joseph Creighton. Maybe. But I've been trying to forget about him ever since I first saw him. All is peace. 
peaceful and quiet on this pleasant evening in the family home. Mother Barber is darning Andy's socks. After tactfully handing Clifford the want ad section, Father Barber is reading the newspaper. Oh, gone. Nothing in the help wanted worthy of my talents or, uh, <laughs> correction, vice versa. Why, Clifford... Clifford, you put your finger on the whole trouble. That negative attitude of yours is just what's keeping you from getting a job. Now, Henry... You have to believe in yourself, Clifford. Tune up your self-confidence and, and spark, my boy. Yeah, I know. Drain out my lassitude and get a psychological retread and... <laughs> Oh, nonsense. If you'd only take stock of your quality. Why, Henry, you forgot to water the hyacinths. Just look at them now. Mom, Mom, you're neglecting me. Your own son, Clifford. What do you mean, Clifford? Two seconds ago, I sneezed. And did I rate it get so tight? No. Oh, Clifford. <laughs> Clifford, don't you realize that nowadays when somebody sneezes, your mother doesn't say gesundheit? She says tabson. <laughs> of course I say tabson, and with good reason. Clifford? You're going to take a Tabson right now. Oh, Mom, I... Yes, indeed. No wonder you're feeling blue. You're coming down with a cold. Yeah, yeah, probably caught it from Jack. Now you wait, and I'll get the Tabson. Yeah, the finest thing for cold that's ever been in this house. Easy to take, too. Yes. Great new discovery, those antihistamines. And Tabson is so much more than just antihistamine, Henry. It's also anti... Uh, um, uh, anti... Uh... Antiparetic, Mother Barber. And analgetic. Yes, Tabson is more than antihistamine alone. Tabson contains not one, but three special ingredients to check cold and hay fever symptoms. The antihistamine checks the sneezing, sniffling, and nose and throat irritation. The analgetic acts to ease the aches and pains of a cold. And the antipyretic helps reduce the fever. Tabson is a smooth-coated tablet, easy to swallow, with no unpleasant after-effects. Ask your druggist for Tabson today, and keep it handy just in case a cold should strike in your family. Then, at the first sign of a cold, take Tabson, the bright red tablets in the bright red package at all drugstores. You have just heard Chapter 1, Book 74 of One Man's Family, written and produced under the direction of Carlton E. Morse for T-A-B-C-I-N, Tabson, the new improved antihistaminic compound tablet for colds and hay fever, made by Miles Laboratories, makers of Alka-Seltzer. Chapter 2, entitled, Father Barber Has a Caller, will come to you next week at this same time. And now the family invites you to stay tuned to the Quiz Kids, who follow immediately over most of these stations. Family comes to you from California. Hear voices and events today, then Harvest of Stars on NBC.